Rob was on a night out after finishing work on a Harry Potter film. That meant his case got huge publicity. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at five cases where British television personalities met an untimely end at the hands of killers. Then, a moment that would change everything. Within hours of those blackmail calls, a suitcase was found in a nearby canal. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be exploring the lives and real tragic endings of a few celebrities who made their name in TV and film, so do be aware that this is a darker topic than most. Whilst we will endeavour to be sensitive, please do note that there will be aspects that can be triggering. It is also a shorter list in terms of entries, as, in a somewhat bittersweet contrast, instances of celebrities being killed are infrequent in the UK. Peter Arn The fat man is not the only one with that opinion. One of the first true British character actors on screen, Peter Arn's acting career saw him through four decades from film to TV, with sojourns to the stage as well. Arne's versatility landed him multiple supporting roles across many iconic British series in the 1960s and 70s, going so far as to have him play four separate characters in The Avengers and three in Danger Man. You've heard of the brain drain. Well, meet one of the drains. Some believe he was so in demand on television, it was even at the expense of more movie roles. Outside of acting, Arne was also an antique collector and dealer, and by the 1980s was dividing his time between his passions and a party lifestyle. However, in 1983, following a costume fitting for his upcoming appearance in Doctor Who, Arne returned to his Knightsbridge home. Circumstances remain unclear, but after neighbours heard arguing from his flat, Arne's body was found. He'd been beaten to death. The instrument used was a log from his own fireplace, yet detectives saw no forced entry and his valuable antiques were untouched. Suspicion turned to a rough sleeper, Giuseppe Perusi, who Arne had been providing food to. Perusi, having taken his own life shortly after the incident, affirmed the coroner's findings. But questions still remain. Perusi's motive was unclear, and a similar murder of another antiques dealer weeks prior fueled ambiguity. Additionally, the overtly bigoted British press of the time implied Arne's homosexuality as a factor into the death of the 64-year-old actor, seemingly without cause. Vicella Vicky Richards It is a sad dichotomy that Caribbean-born actress Vicella Richards, who went by the stage name Vicky Richards, didn't become a household name. However, it is arguable that, as one of few black actresses that appeared regularly on UK television throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s, her reputation is sadly unappreciated. I think the article should do me a lot of good, don't you? Having moved to England at the age of eight, the acting bug bit, taking Richards to the stage. Not long after, Richards made her screen debut, appearing in 1968's Curse of the Crimson Altar, alongside acting legends Boris Karloff, Christopher Lee and Michael Goff. She would go on to play multiple roles in Marty Feldman's self-titled sketch show before taking various supporting roles across television over the following 20 years. Richards had apparently retired from British screens, ultimately returning to her native Trinidad and Tobago in the 2000s, but was still performing in local theatre and TV shows up until her untimely death in early 2024 at 79. The manner of her passing is especially heinous. Richards, recently diagnosed with dementia, but still living independently, had been the victim of a home invasion. Robbers had gained entry to Richards' home, seemingly without force, and ransacked the property. In an unnecessary and deplorable act, they bound Richards and subjected her to blunt force trauma to her head. To make matters worse, Richards had CCTV, but her killers took the hard drive, meaning that the perpetrators of this violent and sickening act are yet to be found. Gemma McCluskey. This is my house telling you about, Kerry. You alright, gorgeous? For what is another cruel twist of fate, it's arguable that Gemma McCluskey would become better known in death than in life. Born and raised in London, her biggest TV role was as Kerry Skinner in the BBC soap EastEnders. Still a teenager, the actress made an appearance in 41 episodes between 2000 and 2001. Yes, alright, alright, I'm only messing about. By 2012, McCluskey was living a comparatively normal life. 
She shared an East London flat with her ailing mother, for whom she was providing full-time care, and older brother Tony. The sibling's relationship was strained due to his substance abuse, but in March, she vanished. At the time, she was living with her older brother, Tony. On Saturday the 3rd of March, Tony, their other brother, Danny, and a friend went into an East London police station to report Gemma missing. Family, friends and police launched a massive search for the missing actress, with EastEnders actors also joining efforts to find their former colleague. During the investigation, Tony and brother Danny received bizarre ransom demands, but it was a hoax that would only delay the truth. Gemma McCluskey wasn't missing, nor kidnapped, she was dead, and Tony was her murderer. Ten days after his sister disappeared, he was charged with murder. There were already suspicions around the historically abusive brother, with the hoax demands being a mere coincidence. Sadly, days later, Gemma's torso was discovered in a nearby canal. Detectives honed in on Tony, gathering forensic and CCTV evidence which confirmed he had bludgeoned his sister to death, carefully dismembered the body, packed it into a suitcase before dumping it in the waterway. The motive? Tony, again under the influence, had recently flooded the bathroom, and Gemma, having had enough, was evicting him. Although her career was brief, Gemma McCluskey's violent death sent a massive shock through the UK's TV world. We're all going to miss Gemma. You know, she's... She was the life and soul of everything. Rob Knox. Stabbed to death as he tried to protect his younger brother. Lao Tzu said that the flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. This couldn't be truer of our next entry, actor Rob Knox. Having started acting at a mere 11 years old, Knox had a few supporting roles in British TV shows The Bill and After You've Gone. Molly. Oh, hi Josh. In 2004, the teenage actor made his big screen debut as an extra in King Arthur. A few years later, Knox would be cast in his biggest role yet, a featured role as Marcus Belby in 2009's Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Is he working on anything new? I don't know. Hey, my dad don't get on. Probably because my dad's just potions are rubbish. Such was his performance on set that producers signed him up to appear in that movie's sequel adaptation, despite the character not being a part of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. In May 2008, with his role filmed and the contract for his next movie signed, all was on the up for the actor. Just days after he finished filming, Rob Knox, alongside his brother Jamie, had went out to celebrate in London. Outside the Metro bar, a man approached Jamie and an altercation brewed. The man was Carl Bishop and he was armed with two kitchen knives. In an attempt to de-escalate the situation and defend his younger sibling, Rob intervened. Bishop turned his sights to the elder Knox boy and attacked, stabbing Rob five times, fatally wounding him. Rob Knox's story could have ended there, but his devastated family and friends carried it on in an effort to combat knife crime. We found out a few months ago that the, the death rate from stabbings was close on to 3,000 since Rob died. Jill Dando. For almost all of the 1990s, the British TV watching public got to watch the beginnings, the growth and the career successes of Jill Dando. However, in 1999, they also got to see its tragic conclusion. A prolific journalist and an incredibly popular newsreader, Dando's was the face which accompanied many of the UK household's evenings due to her time presenting the BBC Six O'Clock News. Her natural on-screen charisma would then expand into other topical programming, including travel show Holiday and the BBC's institution Crime Watch, a show dedicated to finding and delivering criminals to justice. The Beeb's 1997 Personality of the Year, Jill Dando was often working on multiple projects at once until her last day, 26th of April 1999. Within the past few minutes, police have confirmed that the BBC television presenter, Jill Dando, has been stabbed to death outside her West London home. The six o'clock news was sombre that night, as presenters had to report that one of their own had been murdered, reportedly assassination style, outside her home in Fulham. What followed in the days, weeks, and ultimately years after her death raised more questions than answers. One man, Barry George, was charged and convicted. He always maintained his innocence. The police always believed he was the killer. However, he won his third appeal and was subsequently acquitted in 2007. Even as Crime Watch had to investigate their late presenter, no leads emerged. To date, no one has been found responsible. 
with theories ranging from an assassination connected to the war in Kosovo, a revenge killing by a criminal that Crime Watch had uncovered, and even a hit ordered by a criminal ring within the BBC, which Dando was about to expose. We're 20 years on now, so it's the, the odds are against it, but, uh, but I live in hope. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.